Ladies and gentlemen, Sidestrafe back again with another dose of Arma 2. Except, today you won't actually get an intense firefight. You will get some answers in regards to some very popular questions. Those are, what are my system specs? And what settings do I use in order to run this game? Or perhaps even any of my other games that I play? So, even if you don't play Arma 2, this may be useful to you because a lot of the settings are going to be the same, perhaps just carrying different names, but we'll actually talk about that. If you are interested in just hearing what my specs and hardware is, take a look at the description below. However, stay tuned for some examples or suggestions of hardware that you may want to purchase in the next few months in order to prepare for Arma 3. So, let's actually just take a knee here and take a look at some of the video options in game. Now, when you first install this title or launch it for the first time, they just give you this basic box here of options. Quality, interface, 3D res, visibility, brightness, gamma. This option here will affect everything, and by everything I mean your resolution, your visibility, as well as these details here. So we want to hit that advance button to get these extra options. You want to start out with very high and kind of work your way down depending on uh, your preference for frame rate. So very high gives me most of this. I've tweaked a few of these already. So feel free to copy over the options and see how they run on your system. That way you'll get the game to look as I run it. So let's start out with resolution. I run everything 1080p. I have been doing so for many years and that probably won't change for some time. My aspect ratio in relation to that is going to be a 16 by 9. That's an industry standard, and that gives you 720p and 1080p resolutions. My videos are also provided to you in maximum of 1080p. So please at least watch in 720p HD so you can get a good idea of how these games are meant to look. So now let's skip back up here to visibility, which in most games is called draw distance. If you notice, if we play with this slider, we get some mountains that weren't there before. That's because, one, Arma is an extremely huge game. It's basically a giant continent, which is many, many, many times larger than any other game you may be playing, such as even Battlefield 3, Call of Duty, whatever. It's a giant landmass similar to that of, you know, like playing an MMO, almost like playing a World of Warcraft or something. You've got this huge continent that would take hours to walk across. So, with that in mind, how much of it do you want to draw out in the distance? Well, think about what your eye can see. You can't see a lot of things. Like, yeah, we can remove this mountain, but if we think about it, our frame rate is going to hurt because of this. Now... You know, that may bother you, it may not, it's going to be a personal preference, but it's also going to come down to hardware. I'll tell you right now that I have to keep this below 1600 for a decent frame rate. That's how uh, devastating this option can be. So be very careful when playing around with that. And really, if you look at the terrain, it's, it's good enough, right? It looks phenomenal, as is. So, with that said, let's take a look at texture detail and video memory. These two are actually linked to each other. If I change this one, it's going to change this one. This is based on the memory that you have on your video card. I have a gig, so very high is fine with the mixture of hardware that I have. Uh, I can lower this if I want and maybe save a couple of frames, but again, if I lower this, it's going to lower that. So you may need to tweak that depending on your video memory. So anastropic filtering and anti-aliasing two different things, but they are kind of related in that in most cases, like in your control panel for video card and other games, they may be listed as multipliers of two usually. So for example, in other games, this might be off two times, four times, an eight, and then a 16 time option. Same thing here, off, two, four, and then it skips to eight. So I find that I'm able to run my game with a four time, Anti-aliasing in the past used to be much more demanding and depending on the type of AA you're running these days, because there are different versions of AA that do different things, such as smoothing out 2D objects. Um, be very careful with the option, but play around with it. It's obviously how to get rid of some of those jaggies uh, in, the, in the terrain and on your body and player models and things like that. 
So it could be personal preference, two times might be fine, or perhaps you don't care about Jaggies and you just turn it off. And, and in that case, good for you, you can save a couple of frames. However, I hate Jaggies, so I will remove them. Anastropic filtering, obviously how it filters the textures. In some cases, the difference is uh, just not that noticeable. So kind of play around with it and see what you think and go from there. I tend to just leave these at normal. As far as these four options here, my professional opinion is to just leave them at the maximum of high. The very high option doesn't seem to do that much in terms of difference. So let's look at the, pay attention to the grass, shrubbery, flowers, all gone. That's on very low. We bring it back to high, all that stuff comes back. But if we put it on very high, the only thing it did was add like a shrub right there. So there may be some differences in the distance, but not enough to be worth it. And perhaps you'll save a frame or two, so just leave it on high. Objects detail, same thing, except this affects bodies, corpses, wrecks, things laying on the ground, you know, that aren't part of the terrain usually. So same thing. Shadow detail, if we take a look at some of the shadows, they're actually kind of detailed now. If we put it back to normal, everything becomes a square blocky shadow. So that's going to affect your body shadow as well. You'll save a couple of frames there because a shadow uh, setting is, a, is an FPS killer in a lot of games, but you'll also harm some of your details. So as we switch back over, as you can see, the shadows take the form of the object, like the branches and leaves of the trees, and of course the shape of your body. High dynamic range quality. Uh, some people aren't familiar with this option. The best thing to do is actually look up high dynamic range or HDR photography on Google and see some examples of what it does to a photograph because sometimes in game the noticeable difference from the brights, the bright whites and the darks that it plays within lighting aren't always as noticeable so definitely mess around with that. Post processing is a clear one to see. You can see that everything has become crisp and clear when I disabled it. However, if I bring it back up to high, we get that blur, motion blur and depth of field effect, which I personally like. I think it makes everything look cool and more, I don't know, in, uh, more in-depth or vibrant or kind of more realistic in some ways. So play with it. You might want a crisp looking world. So it's just personal preference. And although I don't think it affects the frame rate too, too much these days, uh, it may save you a couple frames there. Aspect ratio we talked about. And V-Sync, finally. Vertical sync, it's basically just trying to match the refresh rate of your display. So normally it's trying to cap you at 60 frames per second. However, if you got a game and you can go 60 and over 60, then usually, you know, just leave it disabled because you might be missing out on getting a larger frame rate. And sometimes if you're in a firefight or there's smoke and particle effects, you might want that extra edge. And especially if you're getting under 60, usually, again, just leave it disabled because you don't want to cap yourself. Now, enabling it, why would you enable it? Well, to get rid of what they call screen tearing, which kind of you'll see like chops in uh, it, when you're doing like some fast, crazy movement. So, but the only time that you can really afford to run VSync is if you have the hardware that's able to support it and run it well without losing, uh, you know, a lot of that frame rate or going or losing the ability to go over 60 is basically the rule there so i leave it disabled in this game because this is a very hardware intensive game there are some older games perhaps like half-life 2 that you could enable it because the game is so old that you can run it well over 60 that you'll never drop 60 so that's kind of how to play with that again play with it see how you feel about it and go from there so that is that uh, let's get back to sightseeing. If you're curious about audio options, there really aren't too many except for the 128 uh, sample rate, which I believe pertains to the amount of sounds that are available to you at any given time. Uh, so play around with that again. It could depend on quality and whatnot. I know the JSRS sound mod recommends that you run as much as, as high as possible to avoid any types of uh, glitches. So let's talk about what hardware I'm using to actually run this game. Uh, and again, the listing for all this stuff will be in the description below if you're curious about that. Let's start out with the processor. It's an Intel quad core i7, 2.6 gigahertz. I have, however, overclocked it to 3.4 gigahertz. 
basically turned a $200 chip to a $500 chip at the time. Obviously, you can get better processors today. And having said that, keep in mind that what I'm listing to you is actually a little bit older hardware these days. It's actually a couple years old as far as what I'm running. So don't by any means just try to copy off what my system has because you could probably get better hardware today. In fact, I know you can. So there's that processor. As far as overclocking, my warning to you is if you don't know how to do it, don't try it alone or by yourself or at least read up and research and educate yourself on, on guides and video tutorials and whatnot before you really get into doing it because it is dangerous. You can mess things up. You can uh, you know, void your warranties and harm your hardware. And again, that's my disclaimer. But yes, uh, you can save a lot of money and get a lot of performance out of overclocking. So next, let's take a look at the next big one. It's going to be a video card. And at the time, it was called an ATI. Obviously, AMD has purchased ATI, and it's under the name AMD now. So it's basically an AMD 5870, the board manufacturer's XFX, and it's actually the Triple X edition. That means that it was overclocked out of the box. So I don't overclock video cards. I think it's dangerous, and unless you have proper third-party cooling, I would just avoid it. It's not worth it. Um, but that video card has got a, about a gig of onboard memory. It's been a good card hardware-wise. However, I have to say I'm still not happy with ATI or AMD's Catalyst drivers. Uh, they tend to be kind of buggy or have issues with certain games. For example, there may be a game that has an option in it. Maybe I can't run it with my, my AMD card, but I would be able to run it with an NVIDIA card. Or, and that's usually just because of a bug, not because it's designed or not to do it. It's usually because there's a problem with the drivers. And I just tend to have more issues. I've owned, I want to say, two or three ATI slash AMD cards in my lifetime. And for some reason, I just always have more problems with them. Now, yes, they're typically cheaper and the performance is pretty good base, but it comes down to those drivers sometimes, and I'm just really not a fan. Now, on top of that, as you can see, if I were to make a recommendation, I would have to tell you to go with an NVIDIA. You might spend more money, but you're going to get amazing drivers, stable drivers, timely released drivers, and more games tend to support NVIDIA as a whole. Uh, the company itself is pretty good about sending people out to developer studios to, to work with them on getting their games to run well with their cards. So uh, that's my knowledge on that. My next card will probably be an NVIDIA again. So what else? System RAM. I've got six gigs of Corsair DDR3 Dominator RAM. Um, this is an area you don't really want to go too cheap on, but you can get RAM fairly inexpensive these days. I can recommend Corsair, G-Skill, Patriot, to name a few. Uh, you could probably get 6 gigs for about $60 or so US. Um, but this is one of the things where if you're building a new system or upgrading, and let's say you have the money, don't just get 6, get as much as you want because more RAM is never a bad thing. It's not going to hurt your game by having more RAM. Uh, and it's going to be good for you if you're doing video editing or Photoshop or anything else with Windows. You got to remember all these things are eating up some of that RAM. And some newer games have memory leaks, so they'll want to take up more memory than that they were designed to do, so keep that in mind. Uh, beyond that, my motherboard. It's an EVGA X58 3x SLI board. Again, a lot of people like to go cheap with motherboards. I don't recommend it, because this is the thing that's linking all these expensive pieces of hardware together. This is how they talk to each other, so don't skimp on it. Basically, you can get something $100, 150 or more. That's probably a good idea. Some people want to buy these $60 or less motherboards. That's not going to help you, and you might run into problems in the long run. Also, if you are overclocking, the motherboard BIOS is the crucial key ingredient to that uh, task. So you really want to get a good BIOS that does so. I recommend EVGA as far as video cards and motherboards because they have awesome customer service, good warranties, and English forums and, and support. And I say that because there are some motherboard manufacturers that are located uh, in China or whatnot, and they make good hardware, but their support is a little lacking because you can't really find a good forum with a good community. EVGA has an awesome community, lots of people 
overclocking and helping each other out. Really good place to check out. So beyond that, my power supply, uh, I'm running about a thousand watt power supply. Don't go cheap on power supplies either because that's providing all the juice to your components. It's like uh, having a drink through a straw that's too thin. You're not getting enough of that drink. So same thing, you've got to be giving enough power to the system and you want to give it stable, clean power and having a quality power supply can make the difference. So never go cheap on that, otherwise you might be wondering why your system's crashing, hanging, or blue screening, or who knows what. So be very careful with your power supply choices. So beyond that, again, just make sure your system's running cool with a nice case. I've got a Cooler Master Cosmos S with a bunch of 120 millimeter fans in it. Keeps it running fairly cool and it's fairly quiet with 120 millimeter fans. The larger the fan, the less noise it actually makes and the more airflow it tends to push. So remember that. Finally, the one last component that's kind of optional is a sound card. I have a Creative Labs Sound Blaster X-Fi card installed. that allows me to get 5.1 surround sound audio uh, through my optical out and my Logitech 5.1 speakers. So it really uh, is nice for me because I love having 5.1 audio. It, like I said, it can be an optional thing, but in some cases the X-Fi will offload some of the audio processing from the CPU, which may perhaps help you with a frame rate or two. So depending on some of the tests that I've seen. So there's that guys, that's basically hardware. As far as where I shop, amazon.com, newegg.com are two of my favorite choices and recommendations. You can always look at the best deals and get some good reviews from consumers there. And I find that those are just the best websites to go to, at least in North America. And I think that about wraps it up. Hopefully this guide and look at my system settings and uh, specs has been helpful to you. Please let me know any questions, comments, or concerns in uh, the comment area below, and I'll try to answer them. And hopefully we can all help each other out, and we'll be ready for Arma 3 when it releases, uh, hopefully soon. So with that, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will definitely... See you on the next one.